Hello YouTube, welcome back to a set of Corsa and we're in part 2 of 2 of the 1.5 review. Today we're going to be taking out the Ford Mustang 2015 model. I think that's the, is it the Mark 7? I think maybe it's the Mark 7, perhaps the Mark 6. And we're going to be taking out the Corvette C7 Stingray. Two very, very different cars, or at least in different performance bands. But we're going to see what each one brings to a set of Corsa. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'll be doing one sort of calm, easy lap, which is what you're seeing me doing right now. Where I'll just be taking it out for a drive and seeing what the car sounds like, what its performance is like at, in different gears, um, at the more drivable speeds. And then I'm going to be doing one hot lap to see uh, what, what it's like when you when you actually put your foot down on it. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. We'll start with the Ford Mustang. As you can see, it's already up on the screen. It's a 5 liter V8 churning out 435 bhp at 6,300 rpm and 542 newton meters of torque at 4,000 rpm. This car is an absolute beast in the size. It weighs 1,680 kilos. That's almost 1.7 tons it weighs that's really that's quite a heavy car that makes it sound like it's more in a, a muscle car sort of territory which is kind of uh, interesting because uh, I wouldn't have expected this car to be you know on the muscle car side of things but there we go it is in the muscle car side of things at least in its way oh my voice is going hello oh dear <clears throat> let's clear that voice <clears throat> There we go. Okay, a bit better. 0 to 60 in 4.4 seconds and a top speed of 156 miles an hour. I, I must admit I was a little disappointed when I found out its top speed. Um, 156 miles an hour isn't much. It really, I mean, yes, okay, it's a lot and you're not going to be doing that on a normal road unless you're a moron. But that's not actually a lot in the term, you know, in terms of outright speed. That's not a lot you'd expect a BMW or an Audi, you know, a standard road going BMW and a road going Audi such as a, I don't know, I suppose a, a 5 series or something like that, they could probably get up to uh, 155 miles an hour on the limiters um, and, you know, this thing's got a 5 litre V8 and only does 156 miles an hour, that's not really... I didn't find that too impressive. It is a 6 gear manual though, so I did like that. Um, but six gear is pretty useless for racing. It's more of a cruise gear, very uh, long ratio on that last gear, so it's not really helpful in racing. Um, you'll actually see. I'm, I mean, at the moment, I'm sort of in fourth, fifth, and sixth as I drive quite quite slowly. Uh, I might just rev it up here, maybe. I don't know. No, I don't. Okay. So, as I'm going around this Black Cat County, let's do a little bit more. It's a real-wheel drive, naturally, and it's a lightweight aluminium bonnet and wings, and it's got a lot of aluminium and steel bodywork in the chassis, a lot of steel suspension components, things like that, and a 52-48 weight distribution, which does make it pretty good to drive. Uh, it's very, very balanced when you're driving it. It's not, not too much oversteer, not too much understeer. I suppose, with its weight and everything, it does it does have a bit of understeer and the fact that it's it's got a lot of body roll on it I mean I did notice not a lot as in not lots as in a, a lot for a normal car but it's a lot for a sports car I think so um, yeah it, it does have that um, observations on this car modeling is amazing it really is Kunos are very very good with making models on cars and the texturing is similarly amazing I like the fact that it catches all the all the aesthetic aspects of the Ford Mustang um, and you know the car itself in real life is sort of a mix of new and old it's a mix of the classic Mustang feel so if you look back you'll see or if you look at this this generation Mustang you'll see a lot of likenesses back to previous generation Mustangs that includes the three lights uh, on the on each side at the back so you've got the three red that takes it right back towards the beginning I believe and you've got the actual the actual shape of the headlights at the front 
uh, the actual body styling, the window shape, things like that. They all they all sort of hock back to the original Mustang. So, or at least the original ones and some of the subsequent great ones. Uh, apart from the was it the Mark III, the Mark III Mustang was really really not nice. So um, let's not let's not let's pretend that Mustang never existed. That was that was a really bad Mustang. Right, um, it drives pretty well, like I said, when you keep it in its limits, um, and you can just hear, now I'm starting to put my foot down a bit. And you can hear the engine spooling up as I'm doing that, which I think is, uh, it's nice, I like, see, you can hear that, and I got it up to about 100 miles an hour, which isn't too bad, so you can, you can hear it doing that, which I think was very, very nice. That's something that I did like about this car, is that, in any gear you could put your foot down except sixth but in any gear you could put your foot down and it would it would give you the power it may take a little while to turn up but it will definitely accelerate um, that was in fifth gear I just had it in fifth gear and you know we were at what one and a half thousand rpm something like that I just put my foot down to see just what it's going to give me it got me up to 100 miles an hour which isn't which isn't too bad at all the biggest problem with this car, in a set of Corsa anyway, is the sounds. Interior sounds are really, really good. I think I think they're really, really good. But the exterior sounds, while there's loads of them, they are plentiful, and there's lots of different ones. But the exhaust note just seems to have far too much treble in it. Take a listen now. As as the car goes past, listen to the replay one. That sounds like it's got too much treble in in that in that uh, exhaust note, and it makes it sound quite artificial. And I don't I don't think it needs to sound artificial. I think it should sound more natural. Uh, I saw one of these cars the other day. It, it doesn't sound. I don't think it sounds like that at all. Um, okay, no, no, no. Correction. It does sound like that, but I don't think it's got that much treble in it. I think there may have been maybe maybe a glitch on. On the record, uh, on the recording, because obviously Kunos use their special. You know, they've got their sound dynamics people, and they they use all their special recorders to accurately represent the exhaust notes and uh, all of that kind of stuff. But uh, I don't know; it just didn't sound right to me. I'll get back on the sounds, but let's go back to the driving for a few seconds. You saw me sliding over there. It was actually a really, really nice slide. Um, it, I was just trying to see just what would happen if you try and get the rear end loose on the car and as expected it, it did start sliding out, had a bit of a fishtail but it was very very controllable, it felt like I wasn't really putting too much effort into correcting it. Um, this car does tend to understeer when you're, when you're on the power, it does tend to understeer as opposed to oversteer, I would have expected it to oversteer but when you're when you're already on the power, so for example, let's say you're on a corner like this and you start accelerating out the corner, it does push quite strongly towards the outside, which uh, which was a little bit interesting because I thought with its with its uh, drivetrain configuration it would it be more more so trying to, you know, spin up and push towards the inside, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Perhaps the tires are really, really um quite quite uh, well made perhaps they've got a lot of grip on them speaking of tires you guys are enjoying the tire wrap if you look to the right of the tire wrap on the speedometer and the tachometer right this the tack says revolutions per minute i suppose someone needs that i mean i suppose on all the other cars it does say rpm so i suppose you need that i don't know i think everyone should know by now what rpm is that was a bit odd what was even more odd is if you look at the speedometer it says ground speed now this isn't an aircraft we don't need ground speed uh, true airspeed indicated airspeed corrected airspeed whatever whatever we're going to have we don't need that it's ground speed this car's only going to be on the ground you, you're not you're not gonna I mean what would happen if you took this car in an aircraft would that suddenly you know not give you any uh, would that suddenly change to like airspeed or something or would that just stay as ground speed and just reach zero because then it's wrong because obviously you're you're actually you know you're not doing zero on the ground you're doing something okay I'm digressing but still it's it's just something that I found that was quite odd 
about this car. Overall though, I think I'm going to give this car an 8 out of 10. Uh, this is our second attempt at recording this. I, my first attempt had my colleague uh, here, but it was a... Uh, the recording ended up getting messed up, so he couldn't make it today. So um, unfortunately, it's just me again. But he gave it an eight and a half out of ten. I give it. I give it an eight out of ten. He gave it an eight and a half out of ten. His reason for not giving it the full marks was it. The sound did let him down, and also at the low revs, it sounded like it was only running on four cylinders for some strange reason. But that was that was predominantly the reason he gave it an eight out of ten. It's, uh, it's the sounds that let it down and um, everything else about it he liked he's a Ford fan I'm a Ford fan so we both we both enjoy this car we both like the car it's it's nice to drive uh, Black Cat County is not the best of tracks around but it's still fairly good it's a test bed track I was told so I can understand why the road's rough at some stage and things like that I suppose it's okay to test the car and I suppose it's okay to drive certain cars on it but I, I'm not too sure about the track uh, but this car is definitely definitely a good car. I think people people will enjoy driving it and That brings us to the end of this car So we're going to switch over in a few seconds to the Corvette C7 Stingray. Let's see if I get this fade right three two one fade Fade there we go fade fade there we go so now we're in the Corvette C7 Stingray immediately you can see the difference in it is just the way it looks is just immediately different but the biggest difference apart from the way the engine sounds is there's a lot of noise in the car there's this gear clunk that I don't like I'll get onto that but there seems to be a lot of noise in the car there you go that sounds like a lot more noise than there was in the Mustang but let's just forget about that for now let's go on to the specs of this car 6.2 litre LT1 V8 engine this of course blows the Ford Mustang out of the water it's a whole class above it 455 bhp which is only 20 bhp more at 5500 rpm but it does have around 80 torque more which is 6 and no, 6 I was gonna go 6000 no, it doesn't have 6,000 torque. That's more like a, a locomotive engine or something. A locomotive engine? Yeah, locomotive engine. 625 newton meters of torque at 4,500 RPM, which is a lot more torque considering that with all that, it weighs 1,496 kilos, which is almost 200 kilos lighter than the Ford Mustang. This car is more towards supercar territory as opposed to the Mustang which is sort of muscle sports car territory. I was kind of hoping these cars would be more balanced to each other but I think it's the Shelby GT350? I think it's the Shelby GT350 which is the one that can take on this particular model. Now this isn't the top of the line model of the Corvette either. The Corvette does have a supercharger model that gives it around 600 bhp or 560 bhp or something like that. Uh, but this isn't that one. We do have a 0 to 60 time of 3.8 seconds though, so that's 0.4 of a second up from the Ford Mustang. So far on paper this one's beating it all the way through but it's not beating it by a massive margin so the question was to me and this is something I wanted to see in a race which car would be better hands down it's this Corvette I'm going to finish off the stats though 180 mile an hour top speed something which I was expecting you know I was expecting that from the Mustang as well to be honest seven gears manual now thank goodness sixth and seventh gear are fairly useless in this car so, I, for some strange reason, both cars have five gears that are really workable on a racetrack. But thank goodness that the seventh gear especially is useless because I don't have seven gears with my steering wheel rig. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and my seventh gear is reverse. And I don't think putting a Corvette in reverse at 160 miles an hour is a good idea. So... Thank goodness seventh gear is useless. Rear wheel drive again. And this one, interestingly enough, has a 50-50 weight distribution. So that's the weight distribution P 
people actually uh what's what's the right word they they strive for yeah i think i think that's good they strive towards a 50 50 weight distribution because when you have 50 50 weight distribution you have a perfectly balanced car which means that the car will have the absolute perfect balance of oversteer of understeer under braking it will be stable under acceleration it will be stable going around corners it will be agile but stable um you know it'll have everything down to a T and that's exactly what Corvette seemed to have done here so the question is does it work with the 50-50 weight distribution the lightweight body or generally lightweight in in relational terms the powerful engine the aluminium space frame with carbon fiber bonnets and roofs and the carbon nano composite underbody with I think plastic paneling I think that's the right thing so I th I think think a lot of the body's made out of plastic or carbon fiber with all its undersides being you know whatever else it's supposed to be as with the mustang the modeling of this is superb and as you know likewise is the texturing i was immediately going to give it marks down if that hud did not work if the hud did not work i was immediately going to knock a, a, a point off it because i saw i first saw this car in gran turismo 6 I was going to say Gran Turismo 7, but that doesn't exist. Um, Gran Turismo 6. And when I saw this car in there, I thought, well, this is a nice looking car. It looks very aggressive. It looks very forward to the future, but it also looks back. Just like the Mustang, it looks back as well towards some of the best aspects of its predecessors. So I thought the car itself was really, really nice in that kind of sense. And I noticed it had a HUD. And I thought, when they announced this in a set of Corsa, I thought, if it doesn't have a HUD in a set of Corsa, I'm going to immediately mark it down. Thankfully, it has one, and it works, and it works really, really well. I like it. I like seeing that HUD like that. Sixth and seventh key I've already mentioned. The sound here, I've already mentioned because there's a lot of interior noise where there really shouldn't be interior noise. Uh, I'm going to put my foot down here again. Now, you can hear, this one's a lot quieter as it starts picking up. But it has this, like, burbling noise. You know, it's, it's a thoroughbred V8 sound. Um, I, I don't know, I don't know why the Mustang... I suppose, I suppose... In fact, I'll get onto that in a few seconds. Let me finish off what I was going to be talking about, and then I'll get onto maybe why the V8 sound different. Uh, the sounds are quite accurate. I like the exterior sounds a lot more on this on this car than I did on the Mustang. And the interior sounds are accurate, but I think that the there you go. I think that the inside, the noise of the road, the noise of the suspension and all of that, I think that's a bit too loud. And I really didn't like that gear clunk. So there is that. But the car overall is really, really nice to drive. You're about to see me winding up for a fast lap now, so listen to this. So you can hear when you when you stop putting your foot down, you do hear the power, and you feel the power. The car to drive is more alive. It feels more agile than the Mustang. It felt more more responsive than the Mustang, and it was definitely definitely quicker off the line. Um, what I did like is both of these cars. You can do massive burnouts in both of these cars. Uh, so there was that, and you can do donuts in both of these cars very nicely as well. So there was that as well. So I quite I quite like that. But, I was talking about the engines, weren't I? So, the engines on these, I think it's got to do with the way the cylinder banks are firing. So, on the Mustang, it sounds like, first of all, when it's in low revs, it sounds like there's only four cylinders firing, as opposed to eight. Uh, which might actually be the case. On this, it sounds like there's eight firing regardless all the time. So, that might be the case on the Mustang, which would explain why it sounds a bit strange when it's in the, you know, when you're driving slowly in the higher gears, it sounds a little bit strange, I can, I can understand that. I think when it's getting up to speed, I think it's got to do with the way the cylinders are firing in the sense that normally you'd have, if on an eight cylinder setup, you'd have, uh, let's see, how would I explain this? Okay, say one, two, three, four is one bank uh, or one side of the V8 and 5, 6, 7, 8 is the other side in the same way. So 1 and 5 are opposite, opposite each other, 2 and 6, so, so, forth, so on and so forth. 
Normally, you probably have one firing or one up, uh, six down, three up, and eight down. That's what you'd have, and then it would switch over. And that's that's one way of um, one way of firing a V8. The other way, I think, is called transverse, and that would be the the way it's aligned and everything. You have one, two, three, four up, and you'd have five, six, seven, eight down. And I think that might be what the Corvette's using here. So there is that. It makes a car sound very different. It does sound like a Corvette. It feels like a Corvette. It drives like a Corvette. It's, I really did like this car. And I'm a Ford fan. And I, I think I prefer this car over the Mustang definitely. And uh, not just in power wise. It was just driving wise. It just felt, it just felt more complete. Felt more like a supercar. Felt more raw. Felt more... It just felt a lot, a lot better, and I, I did. I do have to admit, I do kind of like the dials. It has this uh, Lexus LFA style dialing going on, which um, dialing, yep, yeah, it's just going to dial someone. It has this dialing going on, which I think is really, really nice. It, it suits the car well, but it also has these analog dials around, which I, I like as well. But overall, I think the 1.5 update itself is a really good update. I think overall it is a really good update, but there is the big question and the big question is which car is the best i want to know if you guys leave it in the comments box below which car you think is the best out of these three as i give it a bit of a bump and more importantly i also want to know what you guys think of black cat county because i don't i don't hate it i know there's it's been getting some hate i don't love it but i don't hate it it's i just find it okay it's it's good in some ways and it's not good in other ways for me my favorite car is the fiat 595 a bath hands down that wins no matter what and it was the same for my partner and we rated this car i forgot to tell you that we rated this car a nine so a fairly good rating for us and that brings us towards or towards the end of the video actually i did say towards i'm getting all mumbo jumbo here it brings us to the end of the video, so thank you very much for watching. Please remember to hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe to our channel for more videos on a set of Corsa, and leave a comment box in leave a comment in the comments box below. What is going on today? I think I'm just going to end this video before I start blabbering on about anything else and getting things wrong. We hope to see you guys next week.